Good morning and welcome to Quinn Chapel AME Church in Flint, Michigan. New worship experience. We are so happy that you are here with us, joining with us today. We are getting ready to begin our praise and worship to our almighty great God. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we do rejoice and are glad in it. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise God. to worship. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God 
than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where their honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sing his praises. us pray. Our God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Lord God, we thank you for being our shelter from the storms that we are experiencing right now. Lord God, we come before you this morning thanking you for this glorious day that you have made. Father, we thank you for the rain that falls. We praise you for the every breeze that we feel. 
that lets us know that you are always present with us. We thank you for the sun that shines on us and for your son, S-O-N, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed his life for all humankind. We thank you, O God, for the ability to come together in this time and in our own spaces to fellowship with each other and to worship you. Now, Lord God, as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship today, let us stay focused on you and your word that will come forth. Give us ears to hear what your Holy Spirit has to say to the church, that we may more closely follow your commands, walk in your will, as we keep our trust in you. For you, Lord God, are our comfort, our peace, our way maker, and we rejoice and worship you, giving you honor, giving you glory, and giving you praise. And we say amen, amen, and amen.
reading for today is found in the book of Genesis, the 16th chapter. I'll be reading verses 7 through 13 from the New Living Translation. The angel of the Lord found Hagar beside a spring of water in the wilderness along the road to Shur. The angel said to her, Hagar, 
Sarai's servant, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she replied. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her authority. Then he added, I will give you more descendants than you can count. And the angel also said, you are now pregnant and will give birth to a son. You are to name him Ishmael, which means God hears. For the Lord has heard your cry of distress. This son of yours will be a wild man, as untamed as a wild donkey. He will raise his fists against everyone, and everyone will be against him. Yes, he will live in open hostility against all his relatives. Thereafter, Hagar used another name to refer to the Lord who had spoken to her. She said, you are the God who sees me. She also said, have I truly seen the one who sees me? May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. We're an anchor for those who are hurting. We're a harbor for those who are lost. Sometimes it's not always easy bearing Calvary's cross. We've been ridiculed by those who don't know him And mocked by those who don't believe Still I love standing up for my Jesus Cause of all that he's done The gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. No, I am not afraid to be counted, but I'm willing to give my life. See, I'm ready to be. Every moment his hand has held mercy for all the love he's shown in my life. A simple thanks just doesn't say how I'm feeling. I get tears in my eyes. So as for me, I'm gonna keep on believing in the one who's been so faithful to me. I'm not out to please this whole world around me. the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. No, I am not afraid 
Sister Anne, for blessing us in worship this morning. Thank you for blessing us with that song, reminding us that we cannot be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is his gospel that sets us free. I want to be counted. I want to be in that number. I want to be used by God. I am ready and I pray that each of you are ready as we continue to prepare to be in battle for the lives and souls of those who are lost. Let's get prepared for the work that he has called us to do. Let us get prepared as we go further in worship and just look at, listen and learn from his word. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, most kind and gracious God, Lord, we thank you, Father, for the opportunity to further get prepared. Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for we know that there is work yet for us to do. We pray right now, Lord, that you will make it clear to us what it is we need to do and what we need to say to bring others to you. We pray right now, Lord God, that you will open up our hearts, our minds, and our souls, Father, so that when we hear, Heavenly Father, that we will not only hear, Lord God, but that we will be doers of what you would have us to do. Lord, I pray right now that you would use me, Father, for your glory. I pray right now, Lord God, that you would give me the anointing, Lord, to be able to speak what you have given for me to say. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that as the words go forth, Lord, that they will not fall on deaf ears. Give me the power, Lord God. Give me the strength, Lord, to be able to deliver your word. It is in your son Jesus' name that I pray and say amen. On this beautiful first Sunday in May, where most of us are still sheltered in, but thank God we're not shielded in, shielded in from the free-flowing love and safety and security that the Lord brings. Now, as we get started, as I usually ask each of you to do, I'd like you to turn to whoever is with you or if you by yourself, I'd like you to just say this, say, he sees me. Now, this time, I'd like you to say it again, but this time put God in it and say, God sees me. Yes, in this age of technology, where we right now can see those who are brave enough to join us by video. And if we can't see your faces, we at least see some of your phone numbers. Yes, with this technology that sees all that we do, we sometimes forget that we can be seen. Just like that news reporter who went on air last week thinking people could only see the top part of him, when in fact, they could see that he wasn't even wearing any pants. Yes, people can see us and they do see us. 
and sometimes we are not aware of all that they see. But before all this video technology came about, when I was growing up, we had our own human video and sound machines in our neighborhoods. We had those that, we, that were our neighbors, those that were always sitting on the front porch, those that knew everything about everybody in the neighborhood. They knew everything when anybody came in, when anybody went out. They knew and they would tell your parents when you weren't home and they would tell your parents and say, you know what, so-and-so uh, hasn't been home all day. As a matter of fact, they left when you left and I ain't seen them since. Yes, we all may have had neighbors like that. But what was so funny is, is that when somebody would break into your house, those same neighbors never saw or heard anything. Did you all live in neighborhoods like that? But what a blessing it is to know that we serve a God that sees everything. God that knows everything. He sees our good and he sees our bad. He sees when we are happy and he sees when we are sad. Yes, he can see it all because he is omnipresent, which means he is present everywhere. He is omnipotent, which means he is all powerful. He is omniscient, which means he is all knowing because he is God and he is God all by himself. And not only does he see you, but he cares about you too. He is there when no one else is around because he is just God. So don't think for a moment as we are going through this crisis that God does not already know what we're going through. He already knows how scared you may be. He already knows how lonely you may feel. He already knows how worried you have become. Yes, he knows because he sees you when nobody else sees you, when nobody else really seems to care. Well, our sister Hagar in our scripture lesson today from Genesis, the 16th chapter, found out just how close the Lord is and how much he cares. My focus as God has led me is really going to be this morning on Hagar and really on all of us who have been like Hagar, whether we are male or female, all of us who may have lived in the shadows of someone else, all of those who have may have been used, may have been abused, all of those who people did not expect to be much or really not care a whole lot about. Yes, we're gonna focus this morning on our sister Hagar, not Sarah and not Abram, who we all know all about and how great their story is. But instead, we're going to look at the servant girl who got caught up in some mess, got caught up in some drama. Are there any Hagars out there today? Well, before we go right into it, I want to give you a little background about the scripture. Now we have Sarah, whose name was later changed to Sarah, who was married to Abram, who became Abraham, who did not have any children at the time. Now Sarah became impatient, waiting for God's promise to be fulfilled. So she decided to take matters into her own hands. How many of us have gotten impatient, waiting on God's promise to be fulfilled? How many of us have jumped ahead and tell ourselves that we are going to help God out by speeding things along? Because we know, you know, how busy God is with everybody else's problems and everybody else's situations. So we'll just do a little something to help God move things along just a little while quicker. And most times, because we can only see what we can see and not how he sees it, we mess some stuff up. We jump ahead and cause ourselves additional pain and cause ourselves additional sorrow. Well, that is exactly what Sarah did. She convinced 
But I tell you, I don't think she had to do much convincing to her husband to take Hagar as his wife, to sleep with her, and to allow her to have his child. Well, of course, this was a bad idea all the way around. But Abram, as a good husband, did exactly as Sarah asked. And Hagar did become pregnant. Well, because this was a bad idea in the first place, Hagar started acting a little funny towards Sarah. For she had done something Sarah couldn't do. I bet she finally felt like she had the upper hand. And you know what? She hadn't asked for this to happen. Sarah had asked for it. Sarah had made it so. But of course, I must admit that it still did not make it okay for Hagar to taunt or to tease Sarah about it. So what did Sarah do? Well, she blamed somebody else. Now that sounds kind of familiar today, doesn't it? She told Abram that it was his fault. And the brother Abram just said, well, you know what? You do with Hagar as you please. So then she started mistreating Hagar. And it got so bad that Hagar ran away. And all that was going on. God saw it all. Just like he sees it all with us too. He sees us when we have been hurt. He sees us when we've been abandoned and betrayed. Yes, even when we try to run away. Running away from our problems. Trying to run away from our pain. God sees us and he knows where we are. Just as he knew where Hagar was. Even in our wilderness, even in our desolate places, places where we have run to, places that we've run to because of the hurt or the pain that's been inflicted on us because of others. But even Hagar, even in her running away, the Lord found her. He found her and he called her by name as he calls us by name too. You know, we can't hide from the Lord, no matter how hard we try. So here we have Hagar. Here she is. And what does the Lord do next? Well, the first thing he does is he asks her a question. He asks her a question. He doesn't give her a command. But he asked her a question. And in asking the question, he shows what love and compassion he has for her situation. Just like he has love and compassion for us. He gave her a chance to speak as he allows us the chances to speak as well. Now, his answer to us after we speak to him may not be exactly what we want to hear, just like it wasn't exactly what I'm sure Hagar wanted to hear. But if we follow God's plan, we will receive his reward in the end. So this is what the angel of the Lord told her, told her to do something I'm sure she did not want to do. But in doing so, she was going to be blessed. He reassured her as he reassures us that the Lord himself had heard her, that even through her tears, just as we don't even have to say a word, that he already knows what we feel. He already knows how bad we're hurt. We don't even have to say a word. Romans 8.26 reminds us that in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. So through Hagar's tears, through Hagar's 
disappointment and her pain. The Lord heard her and the Lord was there to comfort her. From his comfort and from his direction, he told her what she had to do. And Hagar was obedient to the Lord, even though it was hard. But through that experience, she was able to give the Lord a name that became personal just to her. She called him the God who sees me. Yes, when God touches your life, when God changes your situation, you got to make him personal to you. Yes, she probably gave the Lord that name so that when she went back, because that's what he directed her to do, when she went back to Sarah and Abram, and knowing that she was probably going to suffer even more, she could remind herself that God was with her, and that God sees her, and that God was watching over her. Hagar, by giving him that name, by being in that situation, had put up a marker in her own life. One like what we've been studying in Bible study class. A spiritual marker like the ones that we sometimes put up to. Markers to remind us of our encounters with God. That he sees us and that he hears us too. Her marker and our markers remind us when we are at our lowest point, when we are fearful, when we are scared, that the Lord loves us. And not only does he love us, but that he hears us. And not only does he hear us, but that he sees us. In our times of need and he sees us in our times of want. And that he is there to deliver us. He reminds us that if he did it before, that he can truly do it again. For he is the same God right now as he was back then. Yes, those markers help to build up our own spiritual muscles. So that when troubles come again, we have a reference point on how we handled it before. I don't know about you, but I have me some spiritual markers. I have some stuff that God got me through. I have markers when I was sick that he healed me. I have markers that when I was hungry that he fed me. I have markers that when I was broke, that he provided for me. I have markers that when I was lost, that he showed me the way. Yes, Hagar could, back, could go back to Sarah and Abram, for she knew that even when she went back to them, that she was not alone, just like we are not alone. We're not alone in our struggles, and we're definitely not alone right now. There are three points I want to give you to remember from this sermon today. The first one is this. Remember that God knows where you are, that he hears your cry. You may not be crying out loud. You may not be wailing. You may not have tears flowing from your eyes. But the tears and pain that you're feeling may be flowing in your spirit, may be flowing in your soul. But regardless to whether or not you're crying out loud or whether or not you're silently crying, remember that the Lord hears you. He hears you just like he heard Hagar. He hears you. You know, he heard us. He heard us in all of our sin. He heard us in all of our pain. He heard us and he sent his son, Jesus, to deliver us. That's because he heard us and he knew that we could not do it by ourselves. He hears us and he's there to help us. 
The second thing to remember is that he doesn't want you to run away from your problems. No, you can't run and hide. You can't run to a bottle. You can't run to some pills. You can't run to something that will make you forget but if you've got to run, let me suggest that you run to Jesus. You run to the one who can help you. You run to the one who can save you. You run to the one who can deliver you. You run to the King of Kings. You run to the Lord of Lords. You run to the Almighty. You run to the All-Powerful. You run to the one who can help you to make it through. And the last point is this. Remember that he sees you. God saw David when he got discouraged. God saw Moses when he lacked confidence. God saw Elijah when he got depressed. God saw Gideon when he was afraid. God saw Elizabeth when she wanted a child. God saw Jesus on the cross when he sacrificed his life for our sins. And God sees you. He sees your pain. He sees your fear. He sees your doubt. He sees your sorrow. He sees each and every one of us. And before I close, I want to remind all of us. Remind those, especially those who are sacrificing their lives and their health to keep this country going. As we fight this enemy of COVID-19, reminding those who have to go to work every single day that God sees you. God sees you, hospital worker. All you doctors and nurses and nurses aide and technicians, all you cleaning staff and dietitians and social workers, all you security people, all of you who are working in the hospital, working long hours, working under warlike conditions. God sees you, and so do we. God sees you, all of you who are working in nursing homes. God sees you, all you essential workers, those who go to work every day in our grocery stores, those that go to work in our pharmacies, those to go to work in our restaurants, those to go to work in our fast food chains, those who drive our trucks to deliver items, those who are delivering our mail, those who are our police officers policing our streets, those who are our firefighters keeping us safe, those who work for EMS, those who are in the hospital right now fighting for your life, those who have lost loved ones to this deadly disease, those parents who are having to teach their children at home. Those children who are at home and really want to be at school. Those who were supposed to graduate from high school. Those who were supposed to graduate from college. Those who cannot come home because they're afraid of infecting others. Those who are afraid to leave their house in fear of getting infected. Those who are laid off. Those who are afraid their businesses will never open again. Those who are in government, who are working hard to make sure that we stay safe. Those like our governor, Governor Whitmore. God sees you just like God sees all of us. And not only does he see us, but he cares about us. He has not left us, nor will he forsake us. So for all of you, who are on the front line of this crisis. We just want to say that God sees you. We see you and we thank you. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your labor of love. And for all of us, all of us who are fighting this daily in our own way, we just want to remind you that God does hear you. God does know what we're going through. God has not left us. God will not leave us alone. Victory will be ours because God does see us. God does care about us. I know that if he sees you, then I know he sees me too. 
because he cares about us all. So let's just stay strong. Let's stay healthy. Let's stay blessed. Let's especially stay kind. Let's keep our eyes focused on seeing God. For he sees you and he sees me too. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you not only see us, but you hear us. And that you love and care about us. Help us, Lord, to remember that when life gets hard or when things don't go our way, help us, Lord, to continue to look for you. For you, Lord, are with us. So touch our hearts and strengthen our minds to see, hear, and feel your presence in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for always seeing, loving, and caring about us. It is in your son Jesus' name that I pray. Eternal God, judge of all humankind, we confess our need of you. We confess not only our many sins, but also our anxieties about the present predicament, a health crisis 
on a scale so large as to be called a pandemic. We have never had such proximity to pestilence of near biblical proportions. Have mercy upon us. Give us grace to remember that perfect love casts out fear, while also remaining vigilant against the cause of our anxiety. Our prayer of consecration. Today we virtually enter a virtually empty temple with faint hosannas on our tongues. Let not our devotion die. We hold these ancient symbols of bread and wine, reminding us of the meal you shared with your disciples, a meal through which they and we should remember you. It was the night you were betrayed by a disciple. You took bread and wine and blessed them and made them of a sacrament. We once again consecrate these tokens, not as relics, but as reminders of your sacrifice of body and blood and broken and shed because of your great love at Calvary. Now in a different space, made sacred by our present purpose. We partake of the bread, and we sip from the cup. We feast on these symbols by faith, grateful that you are forever present with us, Emmanuel, even in a pandemic, healer, deliverer, blessed Savior forever. Amen. Together we shall say, we will not hold back our praise. Hosanna. Hallelujah. Amen. Together, let us eat. Please take the bread. Together, let us drink. Let us drink the wine with thanksgiving. Amen. Now, as we have partaken of communion together, that's sacred and blessed time in which we remember our Lord and Savior's sacrifice. Before we close, we want to make sure that everyone knows how to look for and to see our Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to make sure that you know him as your personal Savior and that you've accepted him into your life. If you've not done that, we want to give you an opportunity to do so. We want to give you an opportunity to pray the prayer of salvation. And you can do so right now in your own homes, wherever you are at. All you have to do is just repeat after me using my words, but using your faith and your belief. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you as humbly as I know how. Lord, I'm asking for forgiveness for sins, for the sins that I have done, Lord God, by thought, word, or deed. Lord, I'm asking that you are forgive me, Father, for any wrong that I have done. Lord, I'm confessing with my mouth that I totally believe that Jesus Christ came that he died on the cross for my sins. I believe in my heart that God rose him from the grave and that he rose from the grave with all power in his hands and that now he sits upon the right hand of God our Father. And by making this confession, I declare that I am saved I am saved. I am saved. If anyone prayed this prayer, we ask you to call our church office and give us your name so that we can connect you with a house of worship so that you can have a place where you're working out your soul salvation. And if anyone would like to join with us here at Quinn Chapel, we offer you a place here as well. We offer you a place at Quinn. We are a loving church and we would love to have you be a part of our family. 
If you would call us, if you said this prayer of salvation and if you've given your life to Christ or if you'd like to join with us, call us at area code 810-238-5636. Again, it's 810-238-5636. We thank you all again for joining us today. And we pray that something said, a prayer given, or a song sung has blessed, encouraged, and enlightened you. And if you'd like to bless our ministry, we would certainly appreciate it. We have multiple ways of giving, which are listed on your screen. You could give through PushPay, Givelify, and Cash App. Or you can give by mailing us a check at 2101 Lippincott Boulevard, Flint, Michigan, 48503. We thank you again for your generosity. And now for our announcements by Sister Amanda Tipton and Sister Harmony Turner. Good morning. Today is Sunday, May 3rd, and here are our church announcements. The weekly meeting times are 9.15 a.m. for Sunday school and 10.45 for morning worship on Sundays. Mary Burton prayer line is at 6 a.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays and 5 p.m. on Wednesdays. And Lenora Jackson Bible Study is at 10 a.m. on Wednesdays. All Christian Ed projects and activities will start back once we are back to our regular church services. Today's COVID tip with tip is that we become more familiar with technology since we're all closed in and that we also assist others in becoming more familiar with technology. That is another way for us to come together during this time. Those are all of your announcements for today. Have a great week. Have a great week. Again, we thank God for each of you joining us today. We praise God from whom all blessings flow. We pray a blessing on each of you and your families, praying that God continues to watch over you and protect you, that he continues to keep you and to shine his loving face upon you. And that you will continue to fight a good fight, fighting with faith and not with fear, knowing that he will watch over and care for you. And the people of God say, amen, amen, and 